All right, so this is going to be video lesson number 25. We're going to speak briefly about distance versus displacement. Uh, we're going to come back to this whiteboard here in just a second, but notice we do have another speed graph. So we have time on our x-axis, and we have distance in kilometers over here on our y-axis. So we're going to come back to that in just a second. Uh, I do want to touch on page 105 notes, which speaks specifically about distance and displacement. So just quick definitions. Um, and these vary depending on where you get the definition from, but distance is, uh, it can be a measured length between two different objects. Uh, for instance, uh, we are five miles from uh, Whataburger, or it can be also something that is how long you travel in a specific time. Oh, we went 200 miles to Houston. So you got to keep in mind what distance means because it reflects on how you look at displacement. So displacement is how far you are from where you started. Uh, or how far you are from your origin. Uh, again, those definitions can vary based on what you, where you get them from, but uh, what we want to make sure that we're clear of, regardless of where you get your definition for distance or displacement, is that you understand what those mean in terms of a science question in sixth grade. So for instance, here I've div uh, drawn up a distance time graph. So on the left-hand side, we have meters, uh, which is our y-axis. Down here on our x-axis, axis, we have time in seconds. Uh, so I just did a rabbit and a turtle again for comparison's sake. Now, the most important piece of a distance displacement graph is probably this corner right here. And you guys know from math that this is called your origin. This is where it's zero, zero. That would be um, where the x-axis value is zero and our y-axis value is zero. So that's our origin. Now, if you'll notice, something happens here with the rabbit and the turtle. Uh, the rabbit takes off. After one second, he goes 20 meters. After two seconds, he goes 40 meters. Three seconds, he goes 60. So the rabbit's just cruising away from where he started. If you'll notice, the turtle moves at a little bit slower pace. So after two seconds, he's only gone 20 meters. And then after four seconds, he's only gone 40 meters. But notice between four and six seconds, the distance doesn't change. So our turtle just comes to a stop. But if you'll also notice, as our turtle starts to move again, it's not that he's going down in speed, it's that he's returning back to the origin of the distance. So uh, from the six to seven second mark, our turtle travels you know, from 40 to 20. So now we're looking at it a little bit backwards. So from here to here, he's actually traveling 20 meters in a time of one second, so his speed is actually pretty high. He's going 20 meters per second. If you compare that to this area over here, all right, he went 20 meters in uh, two seconds. So he's only going 10 meters per second here. But again, the bigger point is, is that he is coming back to where he started from because now he's back to a Y value of zero. Okay, so that's what I want to make sure that we're clear of. If you look over here where he started from, his Y value equals zero. So this turtle took off at a slow rate of 10 meters per second. He came to a stop for about two seconds, and then he turned back and returned to his original Y starting, but he also did that at a speed of 20 meters per second. How do we know he's going faster? If you look at the slope of the line, the steeper the slope, the faster the speed of that particular animal. So uh, we're going to take a, a second here and we're just going to use the whiteboard to do the same thing again. And I'll zoom out here a little bit and so you can get, uh, we're just going to pretend here for a moment we have our time and hours and our distance. Uh, let's say we have a runner that starts off at the very beginning of a race and the gun goes off. <sighs> okay, so he's going and he's going and he's doing a good job and then oh, he gets a little tired so he stops and takes a break for a second and then he takes off running again he's doing good and then at the end of the circle of the oval of the track he starts to come back to the beginning and he's like you know what I'm gonna finish strong so he keeps going and keeps going and it takes him a total of seven hours and how far did he travel well you'd have to figure out how far was his maximum distance now Again, we're doing distance versus displacement. So if you look at it in terms of distance, what it was his total distance traveled? Well, he went three kilometers away and then he came back to his starting point. So he went a, uh, away of three kilometers and then came back three kilometers. So that means his total travel was six kilometers. However, he 
started at y equals 0 and he ended at y equals 0 so his total displacement is 0 because he started and finished at the same spot this will be best represented if we did this on an oval track which is very similar to how a lot of races are ran so if he started here which his initial starting spot would be y equals 0 and he took off running and after he got to about three kilometers he started to come back to his original starting spot which is right there we know that his displacement was zero but he had to travel the three kilometers away and he had to travel the three kilometers back okay so uh, hopefully this helps clear up things a little bit with distance and displacement uh, we're going to talk briefly about it again in class so don't be too worried if it was a little confusing and we'll go from there